Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to RBN Hardware. Today we're building the best gaming and streaming PC under $1,000 that you can build in 2022. So we're gonna kick the video off by unboxing the motherboard. Now for today's build, I'm picking the ASUS TUF B550 ATX. There's a couple of things that comes included in the box. However, the only part we really need to focus on is the IO panel. So take out the motherboard out of its static bag and put it on its box. I was able to snag the TUF board for a really sweet deal. And chances are you might be able to get it at an affordable price as well. Otherwise, if you want to get away as cheaply as possible, I also recommend the Asus Prime B550M-A, which also supports our Rasync, so you'll still be able to make your PC build all orange if that is what you want. Often this board can be had for just over $100 and I want to point this out guys, unless you're looking for a specific feature, there is no reason shelling out hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a motherboard when it can be spent on a better CPU or GPU instead. Anyway, time to install the CPU, the AMD Ryzen 5 5600. This is a super affordable and snappy 6 core 12 thread port based on AMD's latest Zen 3 architecture, fast enough to handle any game you throw at it, and it actually trading blows with Intel's latest 12th gen offering, as can be seen. So, wanna locate the small arrow, which can be found on the lower left side corner of the CPU. Wanna line this up with a corresponding triangle located on the motherboard socket. Gently drop the CPU in its socket, then lower the retention arm all the way back down again. Now we're gonna install the CPU cooler and to stay within budget, we will use the cooler that comes included with the 5600. And in order to install the cooler, we need to get rid of these two plastic retention clips and all you need is a basic Phillips screw driver. Place the cooler over the CPU, just like so, and then secure the cooler using the same screwdriver in a cross pattern, alternating between each spring screw. Now the CPU fan cable coming from the fan should be connected to the CPU fan header found at the upper right side corner. Now it is time to install the RAM, the Kingston HyperX Fury RGB 16GB of 3600MHz memory. I always found Kingston's to be reliable and they do seem to always nail the aesthetic as well. Now the Fury lineup fully supports our Rasync, which is the software that we're gonna use to make everything look nice and orange. The RAMs should be installed in these lighter grey slots. So open up the retention arm and gently slide each stick into place using your thumbs. You should hear a subtle click indicating that the RAM has been installed correctly. Now for the storage, we're sticking with Kingston and we're gonna use their NV1, NVMe M.2. We wanna loosen these two screws to remove the heatsink. We wanna locate this plastic bag that comes included in the motherboard box. And this bag is holding the screw that we're gonna need to secure the drive. Gently slide the MP1 into place with a small notch facing the bottom of the motherboard. Now, M.2 storage makes gaming loading times several seconds faster than traditional spinning hard drives. M.2s have also gone down in price quite significantly over the years. Nowadays, they are so cheap that I always recommend it for all my budget gaming PC builds. Before putting the heat shield back, make sure to remove the sticker, then put the shield back in its original position. 
And yeah, that is it for the motherboard. Now it's just a matter of getting everything installed in the case. Uh, speaking of the chassis, this is the Pure Base 500DX from Be Quiet. The company includes three fans from the Pure Wings series, optimized for quiet operation and maximum airflow. You also find an ARGB LED at the front and at the side of the case. For this build though guys, we're gonna need more RGB, so to spice the build up even further, we're gonna install these three extra fans from Deepcool with full support for Aura Sync. Now to really maximize the airflow, I'm gonna move the pre-installed fan to the top and I'm putting all three ARGB fans to the front. However, you can also easily opt for two at the front and put the third one at the rear as well. Anyway, make sure that each fan logo is facing away from the front. Now inside this white box, we find every cable we need to get everything up and running. Each fan comes with two cables, one is for the fan hub and the other one is for the ARGB and should be connected to the second fan. The second fan should then be connected to the third fan, which then should be connected to this cable that should go to the header found at the bottom of the motherboard named ERGB. You also need to connect the fan hub to the motherboard by connecting this fan cable to any of the fan headers. Now that we have dealt with all the cooling, I'd say we have completed all the challenging part of the build. And now it's time to install the motherboard. Now before the motherboard though comes the IO shield and there's no screws needed here. All that is needed is a little bit of pressure, something like so, and the shield should eventually lock in place. Now it is finally time to install the motherboard and this can actually be done having the case standing up because there is a small standoff in the middle but once you slide in the motherboard into place it will hold and lock the motherboard making the installment so much easier. Now we're gonna need 8 or 9 of these screws to lock the motherboard in place. Next up we have the power supply, more exactly the Be Quiet 600 watt 80 plus gold. Now when installing the PSU, make sure that the fan is facing the bottom of the case, allowing cold air to enter the power supply. Unscrew the frame, then slide the PSU into place and secure the power supply using these four screws that comes with the case. Lastly, secure the frame to the case using the thumb screws. Now in case you guys want to save a couple of dollars, I do have a few other cheaper 600 to 650 watt options down in the video description as well. Let's go ahead and deal with all the cables. Let's start with the biggest connector first that feeds power to the motherboard, the ATX connector. Run it through this hole and install it into the 24 pin power connector on the right side, middle side of the motherboard. Next up we have the 8 pin power for the CPU, simply run it through this hole right here and install it on the connector on the upper left side corner. This one can be a bit tricky, one way to make it a little bit easier can be to remove the rear fan. And that is it for the power supply, now we're gonna deal with the cables that comes with the case. And first up we have this large flat connector called USB 3. This one goes through this cutout right here and connects to the connector right next to the 24 pin ATX. Next we have the audio cable and this is what it looks like. Run it through this cutout here and plug it into this connector labeled front panel audio. Now pay attention to this cable guys as it can only go in one way. So now <laughs> we got the last couple of cables, the front panel LED and power button. Route all cables through this cutout right here and plug them in just like so. And now to the part you guys been waiting for, the graphics card, the RTX 3060 Ti. Now I ended up picking up the MSI Ventus 3X, but you can basically pick any RTX 3060 Ti variant and expect silky smooth frame rates in both 1080p maxed out and 4K can also be run with lots of detail and achieve 60 FPS on average, as you guys can see. Slide the GPU into place just like so. 
Now, in order to get everything nice and orange, you do have to install Windows as well as some needed drivers. Linked how to install Windows 11 as well as all the drivers can be found down in the video description down below. But basically, you're gonna use a software called Aura Sync and you can basically sync every single component to run in a specific color. But with that all completed and done, let's go ahead and have a look at how the PC handles all the latest and most popular games. So I ended up testing about 12 to 14 titles, all running at high to very high graphics at 1440p and medium to high settings at 4K resolution. As can be seen guys, most games run fantastic at 1440p. You can easily lock the frame rate to 144fps by only dropping the settings just a bit. A common question I oftentimes get is whether the PC is able to play a specific game. Now this PC guys can run any game. And I truly mean that. You can run any game you like. For example, I'm able to run games such as Apex Legends at about 120 FPS, Warzone runs at 100 FPS maxed out, Halo Infinite runs at around 90 FPS with all settings turned up to max, and Spider-Man Remastered, I was able to get around 80 FPS at 1440p resolution. Now, if you want to build something a little bit cheaper or looking to pick up a new monitor, click or tap the screen right now for the best budget 1440p gaming monitor right now. Thank you guys so so much for watching this video.